Okay, you're all very welcome. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Cool, because I don't get a microphone tonight. Okay, these guys get the microphone because they're enlightened. I don't get a microphone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, welcome to Positive Nights. Um, tonight we're going to have a fascinating conversation. I can already feel it kind of brewing in me. Um, do a lot of people here know the work that Gar has been doing and Eva has been doing? Let me see a show of hands so I can see who's... Okay, so a good few people who are familiar with the work. Okay, great. That's really cool. So we begin how we always do. We're just going to do a short centering meditation, okay? And then we'll begin. Uh, what we're going to do tonight is I'm going to have a chat with the guys for about 45 minutes. And then in the second half, you're going to do, if you fancy it, one-on-one -on -one darshan uh, for the second half, okay? So you're all going to leave enlightened for tomorrow. Okay, you'll be living in another dimension from now on. I'm going to take my shoes off for the meditation. Feel free to do so. And I'm just going to ask you all to drop into your heart center. So take the energy from your head and feel it just shift into your heart center. You close your eyes or put your hand on your heart if that feels good. And as a group now, we're going to drop in and just take a couple of breaths into our heart center to activate that, that energy. And just put a bit of emphasis on the out breath. Just feel your body really relax as you breathe out. And feel the energy now move from that place of thinking. So you're moving from your mind into your heart. So you're moving from thinking into feeling. So just really sit with how you're feeling right now. And check in with yourself. And really feel your heart now getting activated. That you're in the space of feeling. You're in a place of non-judgment. Just pure heart space. And as you feel that getting activated in yourself, uh, feel it in the room now, getting activated in each heart in the room. And feel your own connection with each heart in the room. And feel that now merging into a feeling of oneness. Of connection. And tap into the currency of that now as it flows between us all. And now just get a feeling of a little light going on in your heart center, kind of pure white light in your heart center. And feel that energy of light fill the room now and purify the space and purify you in the space. So we're surrounded by white light. And now we'll take a couple of a couple more breaths into the heart center again. And on the out breath, feel your whole body relax. And I invite you now to stay in this space for the evening and to take away whatever resonates and just let go of the rest. So no need to go into the mind again. The mind is a, a different frequency. Stay in the heart frequency. Tap into your own openness, 
your non-judgment. Tap into that energy. And we'll take one more breath as a group together. And when you're ready, put a big smile on your face and open your eyes. It's a good thing to do to start, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it sets the stage. Really um, you're all very welcome, and uh, my guests tonight is Gar Dignam and Eva Dignam. Muller. Dignam. You keep getting it wrong. I always get it wrong. I've been getting it wrong for years. <laughs> well, I, I think we said that joke the last time as well, actually. I said Gar Dignam doesn't exist anyway, so it doesn't really matter, right? Um, so let's see where the conversation flows. You know, I tend not to prepare too much, just see where it rolls. But the first thing I kind of thought about asking today was... Just, you're both sitting here right now, right? And it's been a trip to get where you are, okay? And I just want to give people a kind of a context into your own kind of spiritual journey, you know? So how you began this kind of trip and how you ended up here. Just if, obviously we'll keep it as brief as you can, but just give us a kind of a little bit of potted history um, from each of you. We'll start with you, Eva. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hello everybody. It's so nice to be here. And I just want to start because... I can see energies with my eyes closed and when you guided us to go into the heart and then open the heart and I could see the whole room, room lighting up and that was really beautiful, so it was really nice. Um, Is your mic on? Yeah, yeah, oh. it's, on. yeah it's okay. Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so my spiritual journey started probably four and a half years ago. So before I wasn't really interested in meditation or in spirituality. I just was um, very unfulfilled and up unhappy with my life and I kind of wanted to just find something that fulfills me. And then I read a book about meditation and it kind of told me that, or I read that um, when you work on your inner world and when you meditate, um, you can find fulfillment in yourself. And then um, I was looking for a meditation group and I found Garrett through a friend and I just joined his meditation group and yeah and then I worked with him for a few years and meditated and yeah ended, ended then eventually up here. Now you're sitting up here with him right? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Is that mic working okay? Can you hear me? Oh yeah. You need, you need to speak closer. closer. A bit closer. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. yeah. A bit yeah, closer. Yeah. Perfect. There's kind of a perfect balance yeah. with it otherwise mm -hmm. it gets feed, get feedback. It okay. And uh, Gar, your potted history, what's that, what's that like? Okay, where do you want me to start from? Uh, I suppose you're the whole, you know, how you got into the whole spiritual kind of trip. Very similar to what Eva just said. There was something in me that wasn't happy. It was like I couldn't find lasting happiness in, in the outside world. There was a, a sort of a, a dejection going on. Like from the moment I was, like my earliest memories as a child, I just wasn't happy. And it led me to seek something else. And that's it, that's why you, that's well, why you got on. I, I mean, it, it, it brought me to meditation, it brought me to, to wanting, I, I had a, a big fear of death and dying, and I wanted to understand what happened when we died, and was there an afterlife, and then that led me to explore out-of-body experiences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So early on, that was a big thing that happened for me. I started being able to leave my body and to explore consciousness without the physical form. Yeah. yeah, and a big part of the, you know, the work, when we first kind of crossed each other's paths was through Tom Campbell, who does the virtual reality stuff, you know, and I kind of wanted to start there about the whole, you know, in spiritual circles now, everybody that I speak to an in interview is saying it's really an inside job, you know, how you feel on the inside will shape the reality on the outside, yeah. you know, so... It seems, and we said this the other day, we had a brief chat online, and we said this thing, I told you about that quote from a teacher I really liked, which actually, uh, Tom was here tonight, introduced me to Abraham Hicks, and they said, all you have to do is feel good, everything else will take care of itself, you know? Um, is that, is there truth in that, do you feel, mm -hmm. after all you've learned, after all you've been through? Yeah. Is that where we come home to? Yeah, I mean, definitely, we're actually talking about, in today's podcast about it, um, following your highest excitement, or following the joy, because um, the, the beingness, 
So there's the intellectual understanding of, of this reality, and then there is like the from the understanding from the beingness level. And the the guidance from the beingness level is through the joy and through how, how you feel in your body. And this is this basically guides you wherever you need to go. And this is following the joy, yeah. It's amazing how it's you know, on one level it sounds kind of simple. But there is a complexity to it, you know. Do you like one? It's really complex because we learn not to follow the joy, yeah, you know, yeah. from from a very young age on, like from school, you know. You kind of have to sit, do the exercise the teachers give you, and then be quiet and not play whatever. So you're conditioned from a very young age um, not to follow your joy, but to follow what's right and what we learn, what's what right is so from the parents, the teacher, then later on probably, the, yeah. Employee uh, uh, from the boss, like the, the it's a big part of our programming. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. programming, and yeah. And when I started the magazine Positive Life, right, I used to get people saying, "Well, you know, what's the story? Like, so you can't always be positive. You know, like I, what, what, I have to be think good about everything. I feel shit today. So it's like I remember thinking about that, and I said, I the the vibe I got intuitively was, we're talking about energy. It's not, it's, not, it's not the duality that we're talking about. You don't have to feel good all the time. It's just if you want to manifest something in your life, if you want something to unfold, the tool that works is positive energy. That's the tool you pick up. If you pick up negative energy, it's not going to manifest because it's a different frequency. It's more fear-based. It's more in the lower chakras, that kind of thing. So it's, it's kind of, you know... Do you know what I mean? Because people will reject that sometimes. You're just telling them to feel good. So when you speak about it in energy, is that the way you view it, Gar? Is it just pure energy? Uh, well, it, it's all about outlook in life. And you can actually fake it until you make it. You, you can program yourself just by thinking good thoughts, by being in a good, you know, putting yourself out there, getting up, putting a smile on your face, just repeatedly doing that day after day after day versus wallowing in it and, and creating more of that in your life. True, true. With your intent, because what we put our intention on grows. And you know, you two have been through different stages of of consciousness, which I find fascinating, right? Because when I interviewed Jan Esman, he talked me through the different stages, and mm. it went right over my head, you know, because he was really out there. And we hadn't come across someone like that before. I remember him coming into the venue, and he said, uh, "Yeah, I'm enlightened." No one had ever said that to me, you know. And where are you guys at? Like, you, we, we talk about it in stages like self-realization and different. Can you talk me through the levels and where you guys feel you're both at right now mm -hmm. in, that, in that journey? Okay, so I'm just going to get a level. So there is self-realization and there is God consciousness, there is unity consciousness, there is Brahman consciousness and Parabrahman consciousness. Say the last one again. Parabrahman. Pa Parabrahman, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, are these all coming from Vedic traditions? Vedic or? traditions okay, okay. Yeah. So, talk me through them and where you're at yourself. Um, so, self realization is basically where you realize you are more than your body, than the thoughts, than the emotions. You're kind of the watcher of all of that. So, like, you're in the background of all of this, and you kind of see in your system, you see your patterns, you start understanding how your system works. So this is basically self-realization. Then God consciousness is where you experience God in everything. So you look, you go for a walk, you look at the trees and they, they look really bright and there is colors, you see the energy. Um, um, so it's, it's basically everything you look at is, is God. It's just the vibration of everything you experience. And then um, unity consciousness is basically when you become one with everything. So the, the boundaries of, of the small self, they fall away. Um, the ego steps into the background and the small self basically gets ripped out of your chest. And that's how I experienced it. <laughs> Very dramatic, <laughs> but I got over it. And um, yeah, and then the self, then in unity consciousness, basically the self needs to integrate itself fully. So you need to know that you are the self and everything else is the self. And then Brahman consciousness is the next. It's basically becoming the Brahman. So it's not really a shift, it's becoming that. And the Brahman is beyond creation. 
Um, so that means you become the nothingness. You are nothing. You're gone. You're not a human. You're not. There is no God. There is no. There is just nothing. There is no creation anymore. You're beyond the creation. And then the Bara Brahma means you're still in the Brahman, but you come back in creation. So certain things are kind of manifest itself back, like the love and the joy, because in the Brahman there is no emotions. Uh, you don't experience any emotions. So. Of course, no low vibrational emotions, but also no like love, no joy, yeah. nothing. It's all gone. It's just all gone. You're basically all like plucked off. That's yeah, all, all the all the yeah. human stuff disappears. Yeah. yeah. In the para brahman. In, in, in brahman. And in the para brahman, it comes back, but different. Okay. Yeah. There's a neutrality in that level of consciousness. There's kind of a. Is it like a void? Yes. Okay, and. Gar, have you experienced all these levels? Yes. Yeah. And where, like, obviously you can't be in the Brahman state and function in this place, can you? Yeah. You can? Yeah. Okay. So talk me through your experience of them. Uh, it's very difficult. Yeah? It really is difficult, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it, it's it, exactly what Eva just described. It, it feels like you're partitioned off out in space. So it's like your awareness is here and there simultaneously and you exist kind of and it's like the part that's here recognizes that everything that you're witnessing is a projection on a screen of consciousness on that screen of brahman and kind of if you look in behind the curtain it doesn't exist it's all just nothingness the wizard of oz yeah it's an, an illusion yeah and when you had your self-realization yeah i'm gonna read you a lot of people have read your book here as well was that the moment in the gym yeah yeah, and tell us about that again. That's a really, really cool moment. So, I wasn't. I, I was always kind of seeking something, uh, but it was never a spirit. I didn't really understand anything about enlightenment or the stages of awakening. I was really interested in consciousness and meditation, and afterlife and astral realms. Uh, but I never really understood like what they meant by someone having a spiritual awakening uh, until one morning. It was like. I think it was 2016, I went into the gym one morning, and leading up to that moment, I had been feeling kind of strange, almost like I was in the, you know, the Truman Show? Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of felt, felt like my, everything was kind of like watching me, and I was like hearing messages and songs all the time. I just went into the gym one morning, and I was kind of like listening and looking, and I was like, this, everything looks strange this morning. And the sun was coming in through the window, it was like seven o'clock in the morning, and I just said to myself, oh, I said, all the noises that I'm hearing and the sun and, and everything I'm witnessing, it's not outside. I said, I'm, I'm experiencing it all inside of my consciousness, right? It's not out there. Everything I'm witnessing is inside of me. And as soon as I said that, there was like a Velcro was ripped. It felt, it felt like two pieces of Velcro went like this. And then all of a sudden, what I can only describe as God or the universe or the supreme being literally just woke up in me and started looking out through my eyes. And there was just this sort of download of supreme knowledge that started flooding in on how it was all working. I knew that I was, I'd fallen into a dream, into this character, and that my whole life as Garrett was just false. It was just, I, it, it was a dream I was buying into. And I knew that, I knew that, I knew I, I, you know, I wasn't, it was, a, it was a lucid dream, right? And that was part of my out of body stuff was I used to have lucid dreams all the time. And a lucid dream is where you dream and you wake up in the dream and you realize you're in a dream and you go, oh, this is a dream state I'm in. So this gave me a context for what happened in this spiritual awakening, but it was God having a lucid dream in me. And it woke up and looked out through my eyes. And it lasted for about 15, 20 minutes. Tears rolling down my face. Um, and I also then started to realise that everybody I put my attention on was also me, right? But they were, it was, God was still dreaming in all them other characters. I was the walls, I was the music, everything flooded in. It became too much for me. Tears rolling down my face in the gym. And um, I just picked up my bag, left the gym. 
I don't think I ever went back to the gym after that. <laughs> Never went back. Special gym membership, huh? <laughs> We're doing a deal this month. Yeah. yeah. Sauna and enlightenment, yeah. So, has anybody in the audience ever experienced anything like that? Just a show of hands if you have. Okay, so we have a couple of people who have, okay. Um, and when we talk about each different level, right, Eva, um, you're both saying, you're, you have both inhabited all of these different levels for a period of time. Mm-hmm. Which level do you operate on right now? Where are you at right now? The power of Brahman. That's where you're mm-hmm. inhabiting most of the time, okay. Mm-hmm. Wow, okay. And what's it like to live from that perspective? So, so that experience I had in the gym yeah. was, was known as uh, God realization, right? God realized itself through my physical form. Okay, it wasn't me having uh, seen God or, or realizing God, it was God waking up through a physical form. But my nervous system wasn't able to maintain that, so it closed down and I was left in a permanent state of what's known as self realization. Free, I just felt free, I felt like an uncomfortable shoe had been taken off. I was very much, uh, I, I was running a business and I was always like on the go, always wanting to do more and succeed. And all of a sudden that just fell away. I was just like, oh, it's just, it's not important anymore. None of it's important. And then the, my, my serious, me as a spiritual seeker started then. That was when I became a, ser- uh, a spiritual seeker. And the level that you both operate at now, just, re- just remind me again what that one, ex- what the experience, oh, yeah, but the experience of it, what's the experience? Um, the daily experience in your life? You know, I feel very normal, like totally normal. There is nothing special, there is nothing spiritual going on. This all kind of dissolves in, in Brahman. Yeah. Yeah, so you feel, yeah, very normal. So life is basically just happening. So you wake up in the morning and everything it just approaches you. So before you're kind of going after things and now it's like, Everything is just coming up, you're doing whatever you need to do, whatever job you need to do on that day. And one thing, when you finish, you do the next thing, when you finish, you do the next thing. And, and that basically, that's it. And whatever comes up, you're totally fine with it. You're totally surrendered all the time. So before you need to practice surrender, surrender, you know. And there you're totally surrendered all the time. The, the, the system energetically is always open all the time. So life can just flow through you. It's just experiences. So before the system kind of holds on to emotions and to energies in the system, and now it's like everything is just flowing through all the time. So we have an experience, so we're here at the moment, we're having this experience. Um, And then when we leave, it's like it collapses, it's gone. So I don't have any, I have a a memory of it, but I have no emotional connection whatsoever. It just collapses completely. Um, Yeah, so you you don't have any past, You, you don't have a past, you can't, tap into the past, you can't tap into the future, you're only here and now, that's it. Yeah. So a lot of people who are seeking enlightenment would imagine that you're going to be in a constant state of some kind of bliss or happiness. Is that, is that a misnomer or is that actually a reality as well? Um, bliss is there all the time, but it's a different bliss. So there is the bliss of existence and that's what we experience all the time and it doesn't have a content so it's not a high or it's not joy or love or anything but it's just vibrations that are always there all the time and then there is the spiritual bliss and it's like the byproduct of let's say um, of like receiving a transmission going to a retreat and you know you feel you feel high and you feel the, the, the joy and, and the love coming in so this is this is uh, a byproduct of, of retreats or, or meditation and stuff like that yeah so there's a difference i was also going to say that when i went through my awakening i had a, a, a kundalini rising and i went into states of ecstatic bliss that lasted for three months and it felt like it was drug induced like i couldn't function but it was a byproduct of the kundalini and when the kundalini did its job it went all the way up uh, that subsided but that was ecstatic, yeah. Is that where you were the first event we did here a little bit? Uh, no, no, no. I was, I was, yeah, that had quietened down a, a lot. But I wrote, I wrote about it in the book, yeah. 
I remember sitting with you, we brought him to the electric picnic, you know, uh, yeah. and we kind of threw him in at the deep end, so we're like, he's like, how many people are going to come to this thing? I said, I don't know, we'll just go down and see what happens. So me, him, and Brandon were in a field, me, Gar, and Brandon, and he was like, what am I doing here? Because the music was thumping, everybody was on drugs and boozing. <laughs> And I, I remember you saying to me you were kind of in a constant bliss state at that time. Oh, well, after giving, so he got me down to give people shaggy pot in, in Electric Picnic after the last. <laughs> and it was, they were, you know, the people who came in were quite open to it. And um, what happened was I realised that I actually wasn't down there to give shaggy pot. I ended up getting lost afterwards yeah. and couldn't find my car for three hours. <laughs> and I was walking around the fields for like, I don't know, three hours, and I was like, what is going on here? I felt like crying. Yeah. And eventually, when I did find my car, I was, I was like, what was that about? And I was given, for the whole time I was walking around, there was this crazy energy flowing in, flowing in, flowing in. And I got the download that I was actually, I was meant to bring that energy and sow it into the land for where all them people were. But I wish they had told me that. <laughs> <laughs> I could have done it with a smile on my face. I remember we were, me, and, me and Brandon, were, we were at the picnic having a drink or something. We were walking around. I said, what's wrong? He said, I have, I have about 15 missed calls from Gar. He said he can't find his car. Well, I thought he, I, we were both standing there going, we thought he was enlightened. <laughs> Guy can't find his car. <laughs> well, I was trying to do it telepathically, but you weren't answering. So I had to, I had to use my phone. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, you know, it's like talking to two people who are kind of, it's kind of like where we're all going, you know, at some point, you know, and you're kind of leading the way. So I've interviewed a lot of people and it's, you know, it's fascinating. You know, when I spoke to a breatharian before, Gar did a bit of fasting as well. And it's kind of like you're talking to some kind of superhero, you know. And so a lot of us would probably be at the place of self-realization. I would say... Where would you say the planet is at right now in terms of its consciousness level? Is it at that level, do you think? Or is it lower? It's not good. Um. It's not good. <laughs> You've, have you measured? You are measures consciousness. So, okay. yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. so if you use the, the, the Hawkins scale, there's, yeah. there's a scale that me measures consciousness. Uh, so self-realization, it's a scale that goes from 30 all the way to 1,000, right? And I use it in the work that I do. Yeah. The average human's level of consciousness on the planet is between 300 and 350. Okay. And in one lifetime, that will raise by about 10. Well, it's a slow process. It's really slow, yeah. And, and a thousand would be unity consciousness. So that's pretty high, okay, a thousand. And the average on the planet right now is 310. 300, 350. That's the kind of con uh, yeah. the, uh, the mass whole, consciousness, yeah. 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 yeah, okay. Wow. And what does that translate to? A mess. A bit of a mess. <laughs> okay, okay. It's not more now. The vibration is going up everywhere. I don't know. Okay, okay. But when, I mean, it's an individual journey though, isn't it? Totally. We really have to remember that, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes you look out into the external and you think, Jesus, you know, all the stuff that you see doesn't reflect very well. But we have to recognize the, the, our own power, you know? And that's, have you really recognized that? Have you really seen... You know, the only thing I have to work with here is this instrument and this consciousness, and this is all I have to concern myself with. Or do you get caught up in what's going on on the planet? Um, no, it's really just everything is in here. And it's like everybody, what you experience on the outside is your own consciousness. So it's really about what do I actually experience? Where am I? Because I can read stuff in the newspaper, I can hear it on TV and stuff like that, but it's not what I actually experience. I mean, we're all sitting here, we're an island, um, you know, and, and who, who do I meet? How, how are these people? Are they nice to me? Are they triggering me? How do I feel every day? So this is what it's all about. And it's not about what, it's, what is in other sides of the world, because people who are there, their consciousness is there, and they're experiencing whatever they experience, but we are here. And everything we um, experience on the outside, it's basically on the inside, but it's just a reflection on the outside. So if we get triggered, for example, by somebody, it's something that gets triggered in us. And then we can look, well, what is it? You know, why do I have it? 
Is it is it something I, re I remember from childhood? Is it something that I believe about myself? Whatever, you know, I just look. And then I, when I find it, I can dissolve it and then it's gone. And then I'm a bit more free. And how do you dissolve it? Oh, in different ways. You can do it yourself. You can just sit, close your eyes and just, you know, go into it and, and just follow it back. Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? You just follow it back. Um, there are probably practices out there you can do. I mean, I do it with my healing work, for example. Um, so I, I tune into people's energy fields and then I, I see the stuff in the energy field and then I can just remove it. And how, what do you think are of this? I forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was just testing you there. Yeah. Um, when you see, when another per when you engage with somebody else and there's a little bit of trickiness, you know, you feel that this person, there's a little bit of trickiness, it's a reflection back at you. Now, the old consciousness would be to go and sort that person out yeah. or have an argument with them, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's actually quite empowering to know that it's about you. Yeah, how you react. So how do you dissolve that kind of stuff? And do you still experience that kind of stuff? Yeah. You do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it happens. And a how, lot less. Yeah. But still, stuff, stuff comes up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How do you dissolve it? How do you release it? I react differently to how I used to react, totally, yeah. 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 I, I don't ignore it. Like, uh, a part of people, when they talk about awakening and enlightenment, they think, oh, everything's going to be great and you're not going to have any problems and patience. Mm. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? I'm like a goldfish, honestly. <laughs> Is this so the consciousness to, you're in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We've we done a podcast today together and literally she's talking to me and I just forget what we're just got gone. Wow. It's like the information is here, and when, you, when you're not shared right away, it just leaves. It just leaves. And it's just gone, and then you're blank. It's gone. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Brain fog. <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, everything is a pure present moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, even, even the nasty stuff just leaves really. Like, you know, yeah. Some insults yeah. it's just gone. Yeah. So the, uh, the triggering aspect of it, yeah. um, you just clear it in your, I mean, the awareness, the awareness of your own pattern, you know, when you shine a light on it, you can release it. Yeah. Um, but but it's, it's really when, when somebody triggers you, for example, what people usually do is like, oh, I don't want to feel this, they, they, they uh, close their energy field, I don't want this, there's resistance and... This person, the person is, is nasty to me, so there is something wrong with the person. So that's how usually people react, yeah, right? Yeah. But the optimal way would be to have like an open system, so it means, okay, something triggered me, it's there, I, I see it, I acknowledge it, the emotions are arising, right? So they're coming up, and I just, I, I'm being with the emotion, allow, allow them to be there, and I, I don't interact with the story, so I don't get caught up in the story, and then it can just leave. It passes through, so that would be the optimum. Way. Okay, to just sit with it and allow it yeah. to pass through and see it as a story, in Not, a sense. Yeah, I mean, just it's an energy. It's just an energy. Yeah. It's an emotion. It's an energy, and then it can just pass through and not not get caught in the story. And uh, uh, yeah. Because these are simple things, but it's good to know them because we all live on this planet, you know, and it's constantly uh, mirroring back to us where we're at. You know, it's a school. In a sense, isn't it? Oh, it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to kind of move into something different. Like, I want to talk a bit about um, other energies that you've encountered when you've been in these other uh, realities, shall we say, or other dimensions. Um, ascended masters. Uh, have you come across any of them? I mean, my reality is here. I'm, I'm like a, you don't. Like, yeah. You're talking about other reality. This is all I know is here. Okay. Okay. Uh, all that exists for me in this moment is you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Gar. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about them, Gar? No, I mean, I, I, I mean, I have, but I can only talk about th them things as memories. Yeah. So I have. I've, I have had experience having astral travels. I have seen other beings. Uh, I mean, I had a, a, a lucid dream a couple of months ago where I connected with um, Sai Baba, uh, Shiri Sai Baba, and he came to me and he told me that I had ascended, uh, I, I'll reach ascension in this lifetime. Um, yeah. Do 
Do you think they're like just movies or do you think there's some kind of importance in those things? So some of them, some of them are yeah. just movies, some of them are messages that come through, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. And Eva, do you have any thoughts on that? Um, it's also a reflection of your own consciousness. So whatever beings you experience, it doesn't matter if you interact with a person or with like a being, you know, it, it's just a reflection of your own consciousness, um, giving you a message, for example. Um, but I, I have to say, I felt beings for a while, um, vibrationally, um, and now I, I, I don't. I, I channeled uh, Ascended Masters once, but that was just like a one-time thing, and then I kind of lost interest, and now I, I don't know. We work with transmissions. It's the energy, it's just, it's the energy. Yeah. It's just pure energy. Minus the information. personality. Yeah, exactly. So before it, 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 so when consciousness is showing you like a being, it's also that information, but the, the person needs a being to interact with. So that's why it's shown <coughs> as that. This is the thing I was wondering yeah. because, you know, I've worked, maybe I've been with a psychic or something, and they might say, there's a message here for you, it's coming from Jesus. Yeah. So when I hear it's coming from Jesus, I get a lovely reaction, you know, I get a V, I open up more, my heart opens up, you know, because I'm a fan, you know, I have all his, 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 his first album was particularly good. <laughs> um, but he's quite a, an ascended master that we, there's, there's a good vibe, you know, um, he's got a good marketing team. But I just wanted to ask you, is that just the way, like, is that actually him or is that just a projection from my consciousness to make me feel more open. Well, it's also what I would call the, the universe or the larger consciousness system using that form to deliver a message to you because everybody knows who Jesus is. And it's, he's such an influential figure in the world that if he turns up in your dream or in your meditation and he delivers a message, well, then you're going to listen to it. It's, it's important if Jesus delivers it. But where is Jesus in all of this? It's just... The man behind the curtain in the Wizard of Oz again? Yeah. Okay. So consciousness really, in its pure form, is nothing and everything. It's everything. It's pure potential. Yeah. yeah. Nothing and everything at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, in it's information. That sounds so kind of, doesn't it? I mean, it doesn't sound anything, actually. I don't have any emotional reaction to it. Yeah. Um, you would imagine when, when, you you, it, when you feel the energies you, you will, right? So when we give darshan later on, people can feel the energy and there's information coming into their system um, and then they can feel it. Yeah, it's a direct experience. Yeah. It's, it's all about the experience. So let go of all the labels, let go of yeah. all the... Just, just, just approach it. it like consciousness. Yeah. I mean, you, in your meditation, I thought you did great. It was really yeah. lovely meditating. Yeah. Dropping into the body and having... The feeling, not the, the trying to intellectually yeah. understand what's happening, uh, just having the body have the, the sensations. And yeah. that's, what, that's what we do, we work with energy. Let's talk about Darshan. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I experienced that with Mother Mira. Yeah, me too. We do, yeah, yeah. We did too. And, you know, you queue up and you feel like you're at mass, and then you go up and you get the eye gaze. And for me, I felt more when I had Amma's hug, that was more impactful for me. So the, the eye gazing was very subtle, very subtle. In your experience, how did it come into both of your realities? Did it come in on a retreat or something, I think, in Portugal? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we were in Portugal on a retreat, and uh, in the morning, the first meditation, um, it was a special one, so there was also information coming in for me. Um, and because... Just to say before, so Garrett and we were we, we started the podcast and we were kind of thinking we would like to do something else together as well, working because we both work with transmission. Um, and at this retreat in the first morning meditation, the information came in that we could give darshan, and also the energies came in and opened up the channels. So there is a the channel comes in from the top of the head and the eyes and the hands and the feet. So the darshan energy comes in through those channels, and then it can be transmitted. Yeah, and this opened up for the both of us, and then we started giving it for the whole week to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so we did, we did it every day. We were there for seven days, mm -hmm. and we did it every day for seven days. And I watched, I, I wasn't sold on it. When it I mean, I, I work with energy, I've been yeah. doing it for like years, 
but I was a bit like, oh, okay, let's see what happens. And we did it, and we, we worked with it for a week. People crying, I felt energy coming into the eyes. It was almost like conscious was saying, okay, to make us, to make you really know, you know, know that this has happened, we have to give you the direct experience of feeling them energies working in your eyes. So it came in, and I worked on my eyes for a few minutes. I was like, oh, that's it now, yeah, it's there. That was just a, a kind of a, a confirmation for me, because I'm, I'm a very skeptical person. <laughs> really, really skeptical. That sounds kind of hilarious, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. After all you've experienced. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. still look at people who work with energy and go, mm-hmm. yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. Totally. You, so you kind of want tangible proof, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Your own experience. Yeah. Okay. But even without darshan, for example, eye gazing, it's a very, very old Indian technique mm. and we used to teach it in the courses. And people would cry just watching each other without any transmission. Yeah. Because just, you look into yeah. each other's souls, basically, you know, there is no barrier. Yeah. yeah. And this is why it's so potent, because it just, the energy can come in, goes directly to the soul, the soul gets the information, and there is no barriers. So that's why, yeah. Mm. It's a that's thing we used to do in some of the tantric events we would do years ago in the Buddha bike as well, you know, and it would freak people out, like, you know, yeah, It'd be like, you want me to stare? I, I ended up staring into some Australian rugby player's eyes. <laughs> I was like, jeez, but I fell in love with the guy after five minutes. <laughs> we broke up last week, but it was, it was, it was a great relationship. Um, Brendan, maybe put that phone on silent, actually. Yeah, because I didn't put it on silent earlier. Um, it doesn't knock off the... It doesn't knock off the video now. Sure it doesn't? It's not, it, it, it streamed, is it, Paul? Yeah. Okay. But it doesn't knock the stream off, does it? It's here more looking for... Uh, still streaming away, yeah? Still, yeah, still streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Thank you. She's my, uh, my new... When he falls asleep, you can, you can look yeah. after him. Yeah. He's, he's going into different states of consciousness. Yeah. We'll put the phone on silent, though, yeah? Oh, yeah. On the side, on the side, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. Um... So we're going to, who wants to experience the darshan tonight? Does everybody feel drawn to doing that? Wow. Okay, you've got a, bu- got a busy night. Oh, but I experience, I'm in this constant state of, I'm at another level of consciousness. Right? <laughs> Very high. Yeah, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. Are you giving it a Huh? I can give it if you want, Emily, to you. <laughs> <laughs> to you. Um, Eve, I want to talk about your healing. Okay, I've had a session with you, mm-hmm. and uh, I felt terrible for a week after it, right? Mm-hmm. But that's a good sign, yeah, in a way. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, call me old-fashioned, I like to feel better after a healing, but I've been around the block, so sometimes you feel shit, because you're clearing stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you work with a person? What way are you, what are you seeing, mm-hmm. and what are you releasing for the person? Because the way you work is quite unique, you know? Yeah. So explain it to us. I mean, I didn't learn it, it just came to me, basically. So it's probably, I, I just work how I work, yeah. Um, so I work on Zoom, or in distance, um, and I close my eyes, and while when I have my eyes closed, I can tune into somebody else's energy field, and I get messages. So. First, what I do is I help the energies to flow more because most systems are very tight, so there's not a lot of energy flowing, there's not a lot of life energy available. So I'm opening up the system, I open certain channels so that more energy can flow in. And I mean, both of us were working with transmissions. And the transmissions, they have healing qualities. So they're already coming in, they are working on a cellular level and they're transforming the system on a cellular level. So they're doing the main job. And I basically assist, I help the energies to to come in, to go into deeper levels. And what I do is I open up the energy field more so that they can flow into deeper levels. And then also I clear low vibrational energies and I work with the chakras. And the chakras are just a, a representation of energies in the system. So they can be basically anywhere in the system, but just, yeah. With the chakras is an easy way to work, and then I, I clear them out of the chakras. So I, mostly it's the first three or four chakras. I clear um, past life influences and uh, this life trauma, so influences, emotional influences, and yeah, I just see basically what's going on for people at the moment and what need, what needs to be cleared, and that's what I just clear it uh, with intention. It's a good combo, the two of you, isn't it? Because you do the meditation, the Shakti path, and people are clearing and they're releasing stuff. And sometimes it can feel pretty intense for people, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's great to have a healing going on in, in, as well, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Do you find you work with similar people? Oh, I mean, yeah. I, I send so many people to you. Okay. Because I, it, it's like there's two sides to awakening, right? There's the awareness, the consciousness side awakening, and then there's the human system. And the human system, like I can work with people, help them to awaken, but if there, there's a lot of trauma in their system, it, it causes a contraction. And a, unity consciousness is an opening. Your system is completely opening to everything. Uh, but if there's trauma in someone's system, they just can't. It just it keeps them, you know, contracted. So I send a lot of people to Eva then for yeah, it's great. It's a great combo. Yeah. So you're yeah. helping them clear that trauma. And also when you know in unity consciousness, you you become one with everything. But this can close down as well again when you just have a lot of stuff in your system. You know? Yeah. And also the, the mechanism, the pushing away mechanism you have before, you know, you can just not feel things, you can just push them away, and this falls away in unity consciousness, so you just open. Everything just comes up, basically blows up. And then some people just need help with that. Yeah. And that leads on to my next question, that why people at the moment particularly are feeling, you know, days where they feel fantastic and days where they feel shit. Like, is there some kind of planetary... I mean, are, do you do you guys buy into that that we're at we are at a collective point of ascension in some way or something's there's happening a, like no, that? There's an awakening going on. Okay. Uh, yeah, definitely, and it's a lot of it's down to technology okay. connecting us all. Yeah. The fact that we're more connected and we're more knowledgeable and informed and well, I mean, yeah. But what's coming true from consciousness? Do you Thirty feel? years ago, you had to go to India to to find a guru. Now you can just open your computer and join Zoom mm. and connect to the energies. So it's, it's like, there's, like from my, my group alone, like there's like 75, 80 people turn up all around the world and all of them people, they're all going through spiritual awakenings. You know, they're, they're, they're having their awakenings and they're all going off then and bringing that energy to their parts of the world and they're, they're, the people they're connected to. So it's spreading across the, the globe completely like. And you, there's so many things in so many different ways but coming from the same source. Like there's so many different spiritual teachers, okay, collectively saying probably, you know, there's very similar things they're saying. But why do we have so many different flavors of consciousness? Is it because we just, we all resonate with different types of flavors? Is that what it is? Yeah, I mean, everybody needs something different. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's all coming from one energy and basically this energy, like all forms, right? So it's a, it's a same energy coming through, but through a different form, and then it has a different flavor and a different uh, way of working. And then people just resonate with mm -hmm. certain teachers, and, mm -hmm. and, and then the teachers can only get people to the level that they're at as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, after all you've both experienced, where do you go to next? We, we become channels. That's, that's, what, that's what it is. So, so the whole yoga, it, it, it's... It, it is a, the soul awakening and then remembering its steps back to where it came from, which is the ocean. It merges back in with the, the Brahman and then it re-enters back down into creation as a divine channel. It then pulls in them divine forces. And that's what's coming like, true with Eva, with me, them energies. Mm. So from a consciousness level, um, the Brahman is the end, but then it's like, more energies are coming in, so we're getting energy upgrades, new energies are working with us, basically. Um, yeah, so you, there's evolvement happening, of course, more and more, but just different now. There's always growth, always expansion, so this never stops. Okay. But yeah. it's, it's not us doing it. Yeah. Uh, like, in a, on a personal, it's not, I don't do anything. It's the energies do everything. Mm -hmm. I'm just here to assist them. Like, when I work with someone, it's like, the, the energy is, the, I, don't, I don't get any information, I don't meddle in anyone's system unless I find density or something and just, it might need me just to open it up a little bit, help assist the energies to come into that person's system. And the personality structure of Gar and the personality structure of Eva, where, how, where's that operating now? Is that like way in the background? No. You still have, you still feel your personality yeah. quite strong? Yeah. I mean, Eva laughs at my joke. I don't know about everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like a template, you know. So in the background, this is is the the, the Brahman, the openness, and everything, and it just needs to work through something, and yeah. It's like an interface yeah. kind yeah. of thing. The flavor of Gar, the flavor of Eva. Yeah, yeah. 
but the awareness that we all are is the same. We all share the same. So when you look around this room here now, yeah. are you looking at yourself? Yeah, I mean, it's all one, it's all the same. Yeah. Yeah. Every one of them. <laughs> wow. That's quite a moment, isn't it? So, what time are we now, guys? Quarter to nine. <laughs> yeah, time doesn't exist, right? <laughs> so, uh, we'll do another, say, ten minutes chat, and then we'll go into our darshan, yeah? And maybe people have questions as well. We'll see if, how that rolls, yeah? Yeah. Um, yeah. God. Source. What we're all coming from. What's your sense of it? What is it? Um, so we all have a spark of God in us. Um, it's part of our soul. And um, this is actually something I do, that's why I'm sharing it. I, I help people to activate that, so that they can feel that. It's, so it's in the back of the heart, in kind of very back um, at, the, at the spine area. Um, and it's, it's the beingness part. So we have the consciousness part and the beingness part. And when it gets activated, so I call it spiritual being, when it gets activated, um, people feel the God part of them, which is themselves anyways, they can experience that. So it's, it never dies, it's, it's strong, it has wisdom, there is no right or wrong, everything is perfect, everything is just a flow. It's, it's really strong and you can, like, people can feel their own energy in themselves. So this is, this is how it can help people to activate God in themselves. And when Eva says there's no right or wrong, right? Yeah. That's very hard to accept from a human perspective. But this is what I experience all day long. For yeah, yeah. No right or wrong. yeah, 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 yeah. But people, sometimes people will say, well, this is really wrong, and they'll yeah. give you an example of something horrendous, right? Yeah, of course they will. Yeah. And it's tricky, but I get that. I actually get that one, you know. Yeah. So, well, yeah, there's no right or wrong. I mean, I mean, God doesn't get involved. It just allows everything to happen. Yeah. 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 And your sense of God. Yeah. So I had a, 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 a okay. So during my awakening, the very first moment I had was God looked out through my eyes, and um, then I lost that. It closed down. And as I was going through my spiritual awakening, uh, towards the end, I had I had the experience of merging with the Brahman, where my soul got sucked into that nothingness and I disappeared, and it was terrifying. And then the next night, I had the merger with the Supreme Being. So my consciousness merged with this cyan blue uh, plane of existence. It was consciousness, pure potential, love. It was the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced. And I stayed there for like about an hour. And I knew, it, 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 the, the sense that I got was like, when you look at Krishna, have you ever seen pictures the of blue Krishna, being. the blue, yeah. the blue, that's what his personal, uh, that person was a representation of that plane of existence. I could feel the love, but it was very passive. And when I was there, I became it. It wasn't like Gar was, was there going, oh, this is really interesting. I actually merged with it and I could sense I was it. Um, yeah, but it, it's very passive. It's, it's not what you would think. Like it doesn't get involved. It's just there existing, pure potential. And we all have that spark, what Eva just described there, in us. We're a spark of God and we're a droplet of Brahman combined in one. So the Brahman, our little droplet of Brahman is our soul and then the spark is our, our spark of God, our being. You know, when people talk about near-death experience, they talk about a love like they never experienced. They feel this amazing connection with spirit. They go into the white light and they meet people from before. And when you say this kind of neutrality or this passivity, you know, passive energy, it's hard. It's, we, we just have such an imagination of such benevolence, you know what I mean? That, yeah, the neutrality seems a bit strange, you know, to get my head around. Yeah, I mean, I had experiences where a lot of love com was coming through. Um, so I had a beautiful experience um, where I had a merging with the Divine Mother at the retreat um, for, I don't know, 20 minutes. So she, I became her, so she 
went into my system and I felt so much love. It was incredible. It was just like pouring in. It was so beautiful. Yeah. So I, I experienced that. But it's not something that's permanent. <laughs> yeah, and that's... yeah. <laughs> Do you feel that's unfortunate, or are you just joking there? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it was a beautiful experience, but yeah, it's just not permanent. Yeah. So, so, so there's another aspect of God, which is the Divine Mother, mm. and she's the loving one and the, the, yeah, the nurturing one, and she's also the destructive force. In what sense destructive? In the sense that she's manifesting and all of our realities for us to have the experience in, and then she's the one that destroys them at the same time. Okay. Wow. And when we talk about the, the so that's the feminine aspect yeah. and the masculine aspect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Both playing a role. Yeah. And the role of the masculine, the divine masculine. Is just to allow the divine mother to do whatever she wants. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> allow the divine mother to do whatever she wants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hands up the men who are doing that at the moment in their lives. <laughs> I think it's good advice, Gar. We're doing a kind of gone into a different territory now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that kind of neutrality, that no attachment, and what I got from you there about both of your experiences was that when you have the experience, you just let it drop. You just move on from it. It yeah. dissolves. Yeah. You know, you can reflect upon it, and that I suppose that brings me now to time. You know. Um, Time doesn't exist, right? So I got this recently. I was watching something about parallel realities and all this kind of thing. And I was getting excited by that, you know, because I like that kind of stuff. And I was thinking, so when we look at this reality where we are now, and we say we're looking at it from the non-physical, right? And we're looking at the whole time frame here, right? You know, the word, when we say it's all playing out at the one time, so right now I'm sitting here talking to you and somebody's in ancient Rome having an experience, right? And it's all happening at the one time. So when we go back into the non-physical, is it almost like, like, I'm trying to imagine how this reality appears from a non-physical perspective. Is it like a giant video game? With all the different times playing at the one time? And you just tap into wherever you want? I think the brain can't really grasp that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I, I mean, just from the perspective of, of Brahman consciousness, that everything just crumbles when you don't look at it. When, you, when you're not there to witness reality, it doesn't exist. Mm. So it crumbles. So I don't even think about other realities. I don't think, I just, I'm just here with you yeah. guys at the moment. And, and when I shift, it's, when, it's not that you shift, I became that Brahman at one stage. And I, I kind of struggled with it because I had nobody to talk about it. I didn't know what it was when it happened. And I was having these experiences. Like, I have two kids. And it was like I'd walk them to school in the morning. And I'd, I'd be there. I'd be all loving with them. And, you know, by kids. And as soon as I turned my back on them, they would disappear. They wouldn't exist. I wouldn't think about them. They just vanished. And I just went on about my day. And then they'd come back and I'd say, oh, there you go, guys. You know, and I was all loving with them. But it was like, you know, my parents didn't exist, people, my friends didn't exist, they just crumbled. It's like, oh my God, it's been three weeks, I didn't even think of my mother. That's just how it played out, yeah. Because there's so much in the moment. You're just dealing with yeah. what's in front of you. Mm. Do you. Do you feel that as well, Eva, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's like that, yeah. But it, like, it, it gets normal so quickly. I mean, the Brahmin... It, it, took, it took a while to get normal. Now it's more normal with the bar brown because there's just more nice aspects coming back. But yeah. it's just, it gets normal very quickly and then you don't really think about it and it's just your everyday experience. So. Yeah, what I'm feeling even as sometimes when I'm asking the questions is my human perspective trying to get a handle on something. I can't. And for you, that I can see in both of you that you don't do that anymore in a sense. No. It just kind of falls away. Yeah. yeah. It's dead. It's a debt. Yeah. yeah. A debt of the ego? No. A kind of an integration or? Something just falls away and mm. doesn't come back. Yeah. For me it was like, I'm not a human. That's what, what I got. Mm. The human is, it, it's really like, it's turned off. It's like you have a boy plug something out. That's how it feels like. <laughs> yeah, you know when people, sometimes people say to me, I'm only human. I go, well, you're not. <laughs> you're not human. We're definitely a spirit. 
having a human experience, you know, mm-hmm. not the other way around, you know. Yeah. And we, a lot of us get lost in the human because it's tricky because mm-hmm. we've identified it for so long. So with this collective group here tonight, Eva, yeah, before we go, you're a healer, mm-hmm. right? And you tap into the kind of, when you work with an individual person, which is what are you picking up in the room right now in terms of the energy that's going on here now? Nothing. Nothing. Because I'm not, I'm not tapping into it. So I really okay. have to close my eyes and then tap into it. And then, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, Gar? Really nice crowd. Yeah. Really, yeah. really nice people. You like them all, yeah? Uh, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that, that's very handy because people are asking me, you know, if I feel other people's energy fields, yeah. how do I go through my days, you know? And that's very handy because I don't feel anything except if I actually work with somebody. I sit down and I work, I tune in, so yeah. You turn it on and off as you need as you need to. Yeah, I mean, I need to put my attention on, I'm doing a healing session now and then it's basically happening. Otherwise it just goes through my day and it's not happening. So what do you say to people who are on this path? What do you say, like, you know, Adi Ashanti has a quote where he says, don't expect bliss, it's kind of like a destruction. You know, and that can scare some people sometimes. And people go into dark places and they lose their footing and they don't know where they're going. What do you say to people having gone through it yourselves? Yeah, sorry, say, say that again. What do you say to people who are kind of on that, on this path that you guys are on, beginning it? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. I, I, like most of the people who turn up to me, Paul, they're they're ripe and they're ready, and they're already on a spiritual journey, even if they don't know it. Uh, is 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 their life gonna get any better going through a spiritual awakening? Probably not. It's probably you know a lot of a lot, anything that's not in line in alignment with your your highest truth will drop away. And that can be relationships, jobs. So it doesn't always seem on the outside like that your your life is getting better, but it is in in, in, in a higher way. <laughs> okay, okay. He's I mean, not a good ad for it, is he? <laughs> it gets more aligned with your with your truth, with the inner truth, you know. So if 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 falls apart, to come back together yeah. in a much more beautiful way. Yeah. So yeah. your life does get better ultimately. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I think we're kind of getting ready to go to Darshan. Before we do, has anybody got a burning question they'd like to ask? Frank, go ahead. Well, guys, it's for you. I just wanted to know... For you. Who, had, me? Yeah. Hey, when Frank. You, when you had your awakening in 2016, yeah. you were in the gym, right? Prior to that, what were you doing that got you to that point? I'm just wondering, like, did that spark just happen? I know you've mentioned before, I read a book, you mentioned on no tapes. Yeah. You know, Yes. I mean, had you been outside your body yeah. prior to that? Yeah. Okay. And was it through Monroe? Rock Bob Monroe? I mean, I, I paid 400, 500 euro for the tapes and they never worked. Uh, <laughs> I eventually had the, the experience just uh, spontaneously. It started happening. But that was like 2010, 2011. They started happening. So, so my one of my biggest spiritual awakenings was because I had such a fear of dying and, and death, I wanted to know, do I live on when my body dies? And when I had that experience of I could leave, I, I could leave my body, I could actually s- separate from my physical form and I could witness my body and I could move around anywhere I wanted. Uh, and that was so free and that was like, I don't die, you know? How, how did you achieve that? What, what, what were you doing in meditation practice? Were you doing something that allowed you to do that? Uh, yes, so I, I guess a, a part of it is you're really like you have to have a burning desire to, to want to do it, to have your own. It, it, it's no use me telling you that this is real and it's this was my truth, and then you're going off and like, okay, I believe it. This is, we spoke about this today, right? You have to have the direct experience yourself, otherwise, it's just somebody else telling you, and it's you have a belief then, and a belief is no use. Yeah. I mean, I would say probably go and get them on road tape. <laughs> I'd give them to you, right? <laughs> give them to you for 250 yeah? Uh, anybody else got a question? But it was more teachers, isn't it? It wasn't just Gary, your teacher, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, Gary was the main one, but then there was Mother Mira, for example. So I meditated with Mother Mira for years. Um, 
Then, of course, I did a lot of work for clearing the system. So I worked with a healer. I did um, karma clearing, some scar clearing. So I practiced for about six months, breath work, combination with visualization to clear karma out of the system. It was a tough time. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot that practices that we that we yeah. that get us there, I suppose, mm-hmm. you know, and they're all oh, yeah. steps yeah. along yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. You had a question there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just wonder if you guys have any experience with ayahuasca, psychedelics, DMT. Because a lot of what you're talking about is like ego death, um, different dimensions and entities, and especially with ayahuasca, the mother figure, yeah. etc. How do you feel about that? Yeah. So how do I feel about people using Yeah, well, I mean, it, what you're talking about is kind of, it's very similar. Um, and as well as like the law of one, like what you sort of said about um, one figure and death, that was, that was the same as me, I kind of got into it through that NDEs. And, yeah. and I found there was a lot of similarities between DMT and NDEs and the experiences people yeah. have. Yeah. So I just wonder if you, you guys have had any psychedelic experiences or do you see any kind of well, yeah, in my book I talk about when I was 15, I took loads of LSD and okay. magic mushrooms. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so but did you, you have any breakthrough or anything that was worthy? Uh, or I mean, not, 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 not yeah. as a kid, not, yeah, yeah. I was just experimenting. Yeah. Um, I, I did experiment with them briefly, just as I was at the start of my uh, spiritual awakening. Do I like recommend people do them? No, I don't. Uh, I, I, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. I say like if they if you do take them and you have like an opening that there's a greater reality and you, you have that, that's great. But not to keep going back and using them and using them and using them. Uh, you know, yeah, they're kind of like training wheels. Mm. They can get you started, but after a while, you need to take the training wheels off and, and cycle the bike by yourself. Yeah. yeah. But having a breakthrough, say with an ayahuasca retreat, totally. is obviously going to be. Oh, I get it, and then you yeah, work from that. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people have profound experiences with ayahuasca and mushrooms. Yeah, and yeah I, like I have, but I have, have you heard of the law of one? Just one last I've thing. heard of it, yeah. Yeah, okay, because a lot of what you're talking about, book about channeling and stuff and stuff. Yeah, and, and, and you, uh, the, the 5 MEO I hear a lot of people talking about, they, yeah. that takes people to what we're just talking about, the Brahman. They have that shift into, into nothingness. Yeah, I, but, I didn't get there, but I got to the door and I me yeah. But the problem is there's no integration with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they literally just shot there with, with no compass. Yeah, yeah. And then they don't know, when they come back, they're just a mess. Yeah, it yeah. takes, it takes, it takes years to, yeah. to, to integrate that shift. Yeah, so um, I don't have any personal experience, but I work with people who took something and then they have problems. Mm. And then they come to me and then I help them to get over the yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, so Emily? Um, about 15 or 16 years ago, I had a spontaneous experience of just walking into bliss, like three days of bliss non stop. I'd really like to get back there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if I don't even know what it was, it was spontaneous in the moment, um, but I'd love to know do you have any reference points for, for what that might have been, and or do you have any ideas from that? How to get back there? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, do, do you want to? Does it reference any of your experiences or? So, so consciousness will, or the universe will often give us like peak experiences, like openings, great openings where oh, I become one with everything. I experience yeah. bliss, and then that leaves an imprint in you. It's like, yeah. oh, I want to get back to that, mm-hmm. you know, and that will okay. that will sort of lead you on your your spiritual journey. It's like I want that bliss back. Yeah. What do I need to do it? Because. Yeah. What they don't tell you is when you start your spiritual journey, it's quite tough. There's a lot of hard work in it. Mm-hmm. And if people knew that, yeah, they probably wouldn't. They just a lot of people want to get to the bliss. They don't yeah, want to go yeah. through all the clearing of the negative stuff. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I mean I, I agree with what Garrett said fully. So it's it's something that makes you interested in, in, in going into the path and then then you just yeah, follow whatever comes up. Yeah. Yeah, and to get back there is is the transmissions. Mm. Yeah. So it's tonight then. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, It'll help. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. You, you said the carrot the other day on the on the call. Is that yeah, kind of yeah. 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 Very good.
So one more question and then we'll go and do, yeah. You had a question, okay. Oh, sorry. Hi, from Yeah. Yeah. So there's an energy coming in, okay. the darshan energy, and it's basically doing the work, and it has the information for your soul in it, and basically the information is to merge back with the divine. So that's the the reason for incarnating here, anyways, right? And this is the soul just gets this information at the moment, and it so that you are finding the way to that a lot faster in this life. So it basically guides you then there and it's an it, yeah it's an energy coming in so it will come through the eyes and also fills up the whole room google so maps <laughs> yeah. it's like google maps and it also fills up the whole room yeah yeah very new i haven't really heard much about it i kind of do kind of do all my research and you know see different kind of things but it's very is it very new to kind it's of ancient it's, yeah. it's a new darshan yes. for like long wow. yeah it's more i think an indian, indian thing yeah, yeah. Mm. But there are, I don't know, like there are probably not so many people in Europe are doing it. Madame Mira is doing it. Um, yeah. A few more, but like she stopped doing it now. We were just talking about it before. She stopped and, doing it. And she, yeah, well, Darshan can be given different ways as well. Can be different, yeah. yeah like yeah. a hug. Amma gives it yeah. in a hug. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And when you do the Shakti part, it's the knee. That's a Darshan as well. It's, it, it, it's, it is a spiritual transmission. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the crown, isn't it? Just the, the Darshan thing. we're talking about is the transmission through the eyes. Yeah, yeah. 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 It has also a different quality. It's a specific quality. Shakti Bhatti is a different It's quality. different, yeah. It's a different information and energy. You described the Darshan the other day as quite gentle. Yeah, it's, it's gentle, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a question down here, was there somebody? Uh, yeah. Brian, yeah, Brian. Just, just out of one of you. Uh, um, uh, obviously, this journey starts with yourself, for the two of you. And you reach a point where there's that switch where it goes and it's about the collective. So whatever you experience, you bring it to the collective, you bring the medicine to the collective. What was the moment when that happened for the two of you? I mean, for me, it was when I was in Bara Brahman and the energy started to come in. So when you're in Bara Brahman, you bring beyond creation and you bring this beyond creational energies back into creation. And they just started to come in this is also when the healing work opened up for me. So, and now it's just flowing in all the time. It's coming in. For example, at the moment, even though we don't give in darshan, the energy is coming oh, yeah. in. But we have the podcast. You know, when we talk about it, the meditation, it, it comes in all the time. So this, this actually when, when it started, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. He's gone into the present moment oh, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm Paul. This is Eva, and this is the. Yeah, so you, when, it, when you start working with the collective, when you start channeling in... Sorry, Ryan, remind me as well. I'm going to... I think I've just become enlightened. It's, it, it's infectious, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, when, um, when, when the energies started to... Started come, coming in for me? And you, you started to work with them on a collective level of, with people. Oh, you, you, for me, it was, I had a, a full Kundalini awakening. And uh, when the Kundalini went all the way up into the brain, I became contagious with Shakti. Kundalini, in, in its raw form, is condensed energy. And when it makes its journey all the way up into the crown, uh, the crown opens and that Kundalini then becomes like a field of Shakti. And then, um, yeah, it just, that's how it happened for me. And did you get a sense of clear purpose and direction of this water and these spirits? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was actually told, um, so like I, I wrote about it in the book, I was literally told I had a business, uh, I was told that my business wasn't my real work, that that, I was, I was gonna, that was going to stop and I was going to work with the energy in the spine. And I had no idea what Kundalini was when I got that message. I was like, I think I'm going to be a chiropractor. Or, or, <laughs> I, was, I was Googling all this. I was like, it doesn't sound like a great job. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't know what it was. And I, know I, was, I was actually told as well that uh, I was eating meat at the time and it explained to me that the meat was clogging up the energy in the chakras and it was like you have to stop consuming all animal products for, for the energies to complete the journey. So I did. Yeah. 
Mm. And you fasted for a while as well, yeah? Yeah, I didn't eat for yeah. three months. You're back on the meat now? No, I don't eat meat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So are you ready to get going? Yeah. You feeling the vibe? Yeah. Great. Okay. Sorry, is that true for everyone with the meat? No. 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 Some, some people actually might need meat going through a pandemic. You're not allowed any, Emily. No meat for you now. A little bit of chicken. Okay, so... <laughs> Will we take a little break and get set up? So yeah. let's take a five minute break and we'll set up the chairs here and then we'll get going and we'll cut the video off. Thank you to all the online heads. We'll see you again. Bye bye. <laughs>